Welcome back. So in uh, a previous video, I showed how to clear a uh, or flash a Raspberry Pi Pico when you've bricked it, when you've made it so you can't access it with MicroPython. So in that case it cleared all the memory there so if you had any code saved there it would have gotten wiped out so since that since I created that video I did it again so I'm gonna go over here and show you how I did it and then how I found a way to save your code and go on and uh, correct the problem. So on this uh, Raspberry Pi, there is this uh, file main, nothing wrong with it. Um, let's go ahead and edit it. And you can see I've uh, removed some lines of code from there. So. This is all in trying to figure out how to do power saving. So earlier on, I was trying the light and deep sleep. That wasn't working the way I expected it. Um, most of the documentation I was finding was dealing more with um, ESP32s and they deal with the deep sleep a little bit differently. So then, while I was doing that, I came across this, where it says if you underclock the, the Raspberry Pi Pico, you can save power. And it did. It went from about 30 milliamps to about 2.5 milliamps on the test with this um, Raspberry Pi Pico. So I have it set to... 10 megahertz in this uh, test. So I did it in the Ripple earlier just to see how low I can get it and it was working correctly. But then I saved it to this main.py. And once I saved it, okay, can still get into the Ripple. Um, and the main should still be uh, running, but let's go ahead and import main. Okay, it just prints out a one, it turns on the light. So that should be fine. Now if we machine.freak and don't put a value in, it gives the, um, the 10 megahertz. Okay, everything seems to be Whoops. Um, everything seems to be working fine. We have that uh, main.py. As you can see, things are running a little slower. But for what we're doing with the temperature probe project, it's a lot of the time it's just waiting anyway, which is why we... Uh, did this is because there's a lot of wait states. So we were trying to clear up some of the memory now what happens is Now that I'll go ahead and exit And I'll Go ahead and So I still have this uh This uh, TTYCM ACM0, and it's going ahead, it's connecting, and as you can see, it's a lot slower now. Okay, so let's go ahead and exit out of it. It's working, but it's not working ideal. So now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the. Raspberry Pi uh, Pico. And you can see that the CM, the TTY ACM0 is gone. 
So I'm going to go ahead and reconnect it. And watch this doesn't do the same thing it did before. Okay, still not showing the, the a AC M0. So what can we do here? Now there's We could try to reflash it. Let's see what happens if I try to run remote. It's not finding it. So now I could copy over a file onto the Raspberry Pi Pico that was done with, say, C or C++, and that would alleviate this issue. But say there was code on there I wanted, which is actually the case with one of my other Raspberry Pi Picos. I had made significant changes but hadn't downloaded it to put onto uh, GitHub. So what can I do? So what there's a, as you can see here, I have, which is an older version of the MicroPython um, UF2 file. I believe the newest one is dated June 18th, so uh, five months uh, later. But for this demonstration, this is the file I'm going to use. And what I want to do is use a hex editor. So I'm going to use XXD, and we're just going to look at this RP2 file. And it's a, it's a, hex dump. Now, this is something that I had done previously when I was younger. Me and my friends would, in DOS, would change some strings in command.com to say that we created DOS instead of Microsoft or something like that, just playing around. So what we can do with this file is instead of going to, um, standard out, we could just send it to uh, temp dump. And now we could take a look at temp dump and it's 36,000 lines. So let's look for what we want. So we want to find where main is. So we can look for main, it's searching. Okay, found domain. Not exactly what we're looking for. Main again. Um, again, not exactly what we're looking for. Um, main dot something. Whoops. And main dot something. And it wrapped around. So let's see if we can find said main let's try n.py and this came over a lot of other searching you if you're using a different file or formats if you got to make changes but here this is why because it moved the main.py onto two different lines so let's I'm going to exit out of this without changing because I made a actually hit a key when I shouldn't have. So let's go back because this is going to be pretty temperamental to make sure we do it correct. So it's n.py searching. So instead of having it go look for main, let's have it look for a main, M-A-I-N, which we don't have that file. And since that's the second letter over here, 6E is the ASCII code for N. So we'll go ahead and change that to 6D, which is M. We save this file. And then we run XXD slash R to reverse it to, again, temp dump. 
and we're going to move that file into no main dot uf2 okay runs through um as a quick uh check both the files have the same uh length so that's a good sign so now i'm going to unplug my raspberry pi pico hold down the boot select and plug it back in and then release the boot select of course so now i'm going to give that a second to boot up and it should go into the mode where you can see the uh the directory so if we look at media slash USB one L S not L W L S slash media USB one. This is the standard file. If you look at my micro Python video, you'll get a better understanding. This is just a supplement to that. So let's copy that no main dot uf2 file to slash media usb1 okay so we copy that file over and it should copy over and should immediately reboot and we should be able to have this ACM zero again. Okay, so we'll run the dot remote file and it connects. And that main dot py file is still there. So now we can go ahead and edit that main dot py file and we could try changing the value or something to that effect, but I'm just going to do what I did earlier and just comment this out for now. So now this won't run this main.py file automatically anymore. So what do we do? So what we're going to do is take that same file, the RP2 file, the original RP2 file and copy that back over and it's going to be in the media USB 2 file, it until I reboot, it's going to just keep, or I unmount some of these drives, it's just going to keep adding the drives over. Um, so what we're going to do is just, again, just to double check, and it's ready for files. So we're going to copy RP2, uh, UF2 file to media slash USB 2 and the file is being copied over and it should run the main file and yep the light just went on because uh, if you recall the light turns on somewhere on that file that's just a temporary file I was using I was using the light as an indicator um, so let's remote should work yep remote works um and the main dot py file is there and yeah i have it going to it turns on it doesn't do anything turns off turns on again so that's uh and then it prints the value but we didn't have uh, a serial terminal connected to it so that is the way to save files and get a unbricked Raspberry Pi Pico back working. Um, as I said, I did this on the, uh, on this is actually a spare uh, Raspberry Pi Pico that I've been testing with. The, uh, the original one for the temperature probe uh, project I'm currently running with that code because it's it still runs independent with uh, at 10 megahertz and with three uh, AA batteries, I was able to get about 30 hours 
I'm trying to double that to about 72 hours, and then I'll move on from there. So this is how to um, unbrick a Raspberry Pi Pico with the uh, saving the files. You can take a look at my other um, version where I take in the, uh, the file that I, um, the nuke uh, flash and clears everything, but any code on there, it will be lost. Um, since this is more of a, um, just a quick uh, hex edit, I don't necessarily have the source code for, I do have the source code and you can redo this file editing the source code, but this was a lot easier as you can see. Um, so I'm not going to put this on the GitHub repository. I will include um, the steps I used in the description if you want to uh, follow along with uh, written text. And I will most likely uh, do a blog post on that with screenshots from this. But I've rambled on enough. Uh, if you want to see what's going on with the Raspberry Pi Pico, go ahead and subscribe. And have a great day.